Extraordinary Easter. Pinkalicious. Extraordinary Easter. By Victoria Kahn. Published by Harper Festival. Copyright 2014. On Sunday, I hopped out of bed in a hurry. It's here, I said. It's Easter today. Edgar must be back from vacation. Peter walked into my room, still half asleep. Who's Edgar? he asked. Who's Edgar? I said. Don't you remember my friend Edgar Easter Bunny? Peter's eyes opened wide. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes, I said. The Easter Bunny is a close personal friend of mine. He said he dropped by this Easter on his way back from Ecuador. I changed out of my pajamas and ran downstairs. Come on, Peter, I said, running into the yard. Edgar likes to leave me letters. There's got to be one around here somewhere. We searched and searched. Mommy and Daddy came out to help us look. I was starting to worry that Edgar had forgotten all about Easter and all about me. All of a sudden, Mommy let out a gasp. Look, she said, pointing to a small white basket poking out from the garden. Daddy scooped it out. It's an Easter basket, he said. There's an egg here. With a letter for you, Pinkalicious. I tore open the envelope. I recognized the writing right away. My dear Pinkalicious, did ever you doubt? An Easter bunny never skips out on his route. I have here a game for your family to play, a scavenger hunt that may take you all day. Just follow the clues all the way to the end, where an Easter surprise awaits from your friend. Kind regards, Edgar Easter Bunny. A scavenger hunt? What fun, I said. We've got to follow the clues. I reached back into the basket and pulled out another letter. This one marked number one. It said, Number one. Clue one is quite simple, a fine little joke. Just soar like a bird to find your first yolk. Soar like a bird, said Peter, confused. What's that supposed to mean? People don't fly, and neither do bunnies. It's a riddle, I said. We have to crack the code. Where do birds go when they're soaring in the sky? Peter thought for a second. Trees, he said. Okay, I said. Now, how are we supposed to soar to the trees? We looked at each other. The treehouse, we cried. Peter and I climbed up to the top of the treehouse. From up here, we felt like birds. We looked out the window and saw a small white basket. We read the clue together. This is a hard one, I pouted. There's hardly any information at all. Edgar is being sneaky. Number two. Well done, Pinkertons. You've got a good start. But this next note will test your clue-solving smarts. 
Maybe Edgar is being clever, said Mommy. He thinks this clue will test our smarts. Test our smarts, said Daddy. Where would we go to test our smarts? Peter started jumping up and down. I knew he had the answer. School, he shouted. My brother could be annoying, but he was kind of a genius sometimes. We got to school in a hurry. There was only one problem. We didn't know where Edgar would have put the basket. Hmm, I said. Edgar would probably head over to the art room. Edgar loves art exhibits. Since the building was locked, we walked around the outside to the art room's window. Just as I suspected, there was a small white basket waiting for us there. Peter read the clue this time. I helped him with the hard words. Number three. Splendid! Hooray! What an excellent race! It's a hop, skip, and jump to the next hiding place. Edgar is talking about the playground, I said. That's where we play hopscotch, the Easter Bunny's favorite game. Let's go, said Mommy. In Edgar's honor, we bunny hopped the whole way there. This time, the white basket was hard to find. Daddy swung up high for a bird's eye view. Mommy and I dug through the sandbox. Finally, Peter found the basket. It was under the slide. We gathered around to read the note. I wondered how many of these there were left. Edgar was one hop ahead of me. Number four. Don't worry, my dears. Your basket is close. Just go to the place Pinkalicious loves most. Wait a second. The place I love the most? Well, Pinkalicious, said Daddy, what place is that? I, I, I stammered. I don't know. I'm just not sure. Can't someone else pick their favorite place instead? No, you have to choose, Mommy said. Just think. You'll know what's right. I closed my eyes and used my imagination. I thought about my favorite color, pink. Pink always helps me. I asked myself what place made me think of that perfect color. I started picturing lollipops, jelly beans, gumdrops, and strawberry ice cream. I've got it, I said. Mr. Swizzle's ice cream shop. There's no place pinker in the whole wide world. When we got to Mr. Swizzle's, the door was locked. A note said, closed for Easter. Oh, no, I cried. Now what were we going to do? I was sure I had figured out the last clue. My favorite place had to be full of pink. I was out of ideas. I felt like a rotten egg. It's okay, Pinkalicious, said Mommy and Daddy. Yeah, said Peter. Let's just go home. I think I have some candy in my room somewhere. Home? Home! That's when it hit me. My favorite place wasn't Mr. Swizzle's ice cream shop. That wasn't even the pinkest place in town. My very favorite place in the whole wide world 
was where you could find the most pink under one roof. My house! We walked all the way home, as fast as we could. On the front doorstep was a small white basket with a pink envelope inside. I opened the envelope and read the note out loud. You've done it! Yippee! You've won the grand prize! I wish I could see you with my own bunny eyes. But away I must go to spread some more fun. The Easter Bunny's job is never quite done. An extraordinary day this has been, you'll agree. Have an excellent Easter, love Edgar. That's me. We opened the door to our house. Inside was the most extravagant Easter basket I had ever seen filled with chocolate eggs and jelly beans. It was the most pink prize in the world. Too bad I couldn't eat it right then. I was exhausted. <laughs>